As some of you have seen in my previous video, I installed this Showchrome Isolator Fuse Block. And the purpose of this uh, fuse block, it's down here kind of at the corner of your picture. The purpose of this is to isolate your accessories from your CAN bus electrical system on the Goldwing. And that makes, it's a big advantage. It basically allows your accessories to draw power directly from the battery as opposed to through the wiring harness of the Goldwing. And the way this works is there is a connector under your seat for this isolator fuse block that connects right into the wiring harness and it has some little wires taps coming off of it that go to the isolator fuse block and basically those wires simply operate a relay. This isolator fuse block is connected directly to the battery so it gets power directly from the battery for your accessories. And the only thing your CAN bus system is operating is the relay. So when you hit your brakes or your turn signal, that wire simply trips a relay in here which takes very, very little amperage to do <clears throat> and are not noticeable to the Goldwing CAN bus system. The problem in not doing something like this isolator fuse block is if you attach a lot of accessories into the CAN bus system, uh, and it draws a lot of different amperage, it can actually throw an error and cause problems with your electrical system. So the point of this device is, is to isolate your CAN bus system from those problems. So where we get into an issue is several different companies now have created these harnesses that fit in line with your, uh, basically, the underseat connectors on the Goldwing. Now you may not be able to tell it from what I'm showing you here, but I actually have two different ones installed. I have the show chrome harness here, and then back here I've actually got a harness for the um, Pathfinder LED. So the, the problem is there's just not enough room for the, all these uh, harness connectors under the seat of the 2018 Goldwing. I also have another one here for my trailer that has to connect in line for all my trailer wiring. So I had to basically unhook my trailer when I connected my Pathfinder LED brake tail light uh, and I haven't been able to use my trailer since. So how can we get rid of some of this wiring? Well, what I'm planning to do is to eliminate the Pathfinder LED harness here. And I'm going to wire my brake tail light and any Pathfinder LED accessories directly into this isolator fuse block. I don't really need this since I have the isolator fuse block. Now if you don't have any other accessories other than a Pathfinder uh, LED, you can just live with their little harness here which is really a nice and well done harness. In fact it's designed to handle up to four different uh, devices. I've got two on here right now, or just one right now. So, we're going to basically have to cut the wires from this connector on the Pathfinder and we're going to connect those to our isolator fuse block. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my trailer wiring harness. I was able to get the wiring harness colors so I know which color drives which item from Rivco so that I can modify my connector. So let's get started. Let's first unhook my, my uh, Pathfinder harness here, and then we'll start working on this. This is the connector for the Showchrome Isolator Fuse Block and I'm going to reconnect it now into the bike's wiring harness and I'm going to slip this back over the little plastic stay under the seat, kind of keep it up and out of the way and I'll tuck the other connectors out of the way. Let's do the other side. Okay, I'm pulling all these Pathfinder connectors because they give you four different connectors and I'm just pulling these back through under the frame so I can kind of get everything out here. 
actually I pulled one of the wrong ones. These are the, these are the, these are the wires and connectors that go to my actual brake and tail light. I'll worry about those later. Now we're going to unhook this connector here and this one. This is our harness from the Pathfinder LEDs, which I'm no longer going to use in my particular case. Like I say, if all you have is Pathfinder uh, accessories, this will be fine. You can use this. But in my case, I've got my trailer, I've got some other accessories from Show Chrome, so I'm not going to be using this. Now we're going to plug back into the bike's harness. This is my harness for the Show Chrome accessory isolator fuse block. And we'll just leave that and we'll kind of tuck this up out of the way. And now we got plenty of room under our seat. Before we had two or three of these different harnesses and there's just not enough room for everything to go. So we're good to go now. Okay, now we're going to remove the top of our Show Chrome Accessories fuse block. You have to make sure you don't lose these little screws. I have my screwdriver magnetized so that helps a little bit. And I'm just setting these on my uh, passenger footrest on the right side of the bike for right now. Just kind of keep up with them. Okay, now once we have the lid off, we can see all of our little terminal connectors here. Uh, on this show chrome device, this uh, isolator fuse block. And we can see we have our, our right and left turn signals, our running lights, and our brake lights. And then we also have ground terminals on all of these. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unhook the existing wires from my terminals just to get them out of the way, and I'll connect those up first. So I know, I remember from my previous installation that my red wires, these are my show chrome LED marker lights. That's what's wired into here right now. So I'm basically using a little jeweler's screwdriver to undo these because it's the only one that'll fit down in there. So the red wire is the turn signal. If it's the one coming from the left light, I know it's the left turn signal. If it's the one coming from the right light, I know it's the right turn signal, obviously. <clears throat> and then the blue here are the running lights. And all of my blacks are grounds. And it doesn't matter which terminal the black wires go into because, well, ground is ground no matter which terminal it's on. So I'm planning to use these Wago connectors. I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced, but it's W-A-G-O. And I've found these to be pretty reliable. I've used them on my 2012 Goldwing. And what this is going to allow me to do is to kind of extend the terminals on that isolator fuse block so that I can add more items. The terminals are very small, and it's very hard to get more than a couple of wires into those terminals. So what my plan is, is to add one of these connectors to each terminal. So I'll run a wire to, for example, the brake light terminal. And then anything else that needs a brake light connection, I can add into one of these pots here. Now the way these things work is you flip up this little lever. It's pretty clever, actually. And then you insert your wire after you've stripped it. Let me strip this wire and I'll show you. So I use my little uh, vice grip stripper tool. And the connectors actually have a little gauge on the back to tell you how long your wire needs to be. So you can always check to make sure you have the correct size wire. Okay, now that I have my wire stripped and I've kind of twisted it <clears throat> here on the end, I can simply insert this, and this is an 18 gauge wire is what I'm using. Just insert it until it stops and then flip down this lever and it clamps it down into place. It's a very easy connector to use. I found them to be very reliable under the seat of the Goldwing. Now I don't know how weatherproof these are and I'm not sure I would use these in an area where they're exposed to a lot of moisture, but they seem to work great under the seat. I've never had a problem with them check out the Wago connectors. That's what I'm going to use. You could use any kind of connector you want for this experiment. 
So I'll strip the other end of this and I'll put it into the show chrome isolator fuse block. And I'm going to do that. I've got several of these. So I'm going to do that for each one of those connectors and hopefully I'll have enough room under the seat to kind of hide these. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Wago connector where I've got a black wire on one of its terminals and I'm simply going to connect it <clears throat> to one of the negative terminals on this um, show chrome isolator fuse block. So I stick the wire in there. So in, in, a, in essence what we're doing is we're expanding the number of terminals available to us on this show chrome isolator fuse block. Now the reason we can get away with this on the Goldwing is because almost all of the accessories other than my trailer are LEDs and LEDs don't pull very much amperage. So now here, here is my negative or my ground and I'm actually going to write on here GND so I know this is the ground. So I'm going to take these ground wires and I'm going to plug these into this terminal. So I've basically done the same thing as if that's going to the ground on the isolator fuse block. I'm cutting the connectors off the end of the Pathfinder uh, brake tail light uh, connectors or wiring harnesses and then I will spread these wires apart, strip them because I won't need their connectors anymore. So here you can see what I did, the same thing on the right side of the bike and I made my wires going to the isolator fuse block a little bit longer so they could reach over here on the right side. Now what I need to do is I just need to tuck these connectors out of the way so I can put my seat on with no problem and uh, we'll be good to go and I'll bundle this up with some cable ties and things like that. But now all of my accessory, electrical accessory lighting are all going through the isolator fuse block and I no longer have to worry about the CAN bus system. Here's a graphic representation of what we did today. Basically I used a three terminal Wago connector uh, and connected it to my left turn signal ground and I moved it over toward the left side of the frame of the bike so that any connectors on the left hand side that need a ground I can connect to the other two terminals of that Wago connector. Next I connected a three terminal Wago connector uh, to the positive of the brake light terminal, one of the brake light terminals, and I routed this over to the left side of the bike because that just happens to be where both of my brake light wires are at this time. I could always add a second one and move it over to the right side of the bike as well. Currently I just have the Pathfinder high mount LED that uses the brake light terminal as well as the trailer. So that's all I needed was a three terminal connector for that. I decided to use a five terminal Wago connector for my running lights and I routed one of them over to the left side of the bike. You can see I have it connected to the positive terminal on the fuse block. And there are several accessories that use running lights. I have my LED marker lights, the Pathfinder uh, LED also uses the running lights and the trailer uses running lights for the tail lights. And there are future things I plan to add that will be using running lights, so I thought I'd go ahead and use a five terminal connector there. The last terminal I added on the left side of the bike was for the left turn signal. And so all four of these Wago connectors are kind of located on the left side of the bike, kind of near the frame where I can tuck them up out of the way. Now for the left turn signal, I've got the show chrome marker lights currently. I'm going to have some uh, Pathfinder cowl lights. I also have the Pathfinder high mount LED that uses turn signals and my trailer uses turn signals. So I needed the five terminal connector for the turn signals. Now I also routed three of the Wago connectors to the right side of the bike as you can see here a two or three terminal ground and then I'm using a five terminal running light and a five terminal for the right turn signal and that way I've got multiple connections that I can use for all these accessories that I have now and that I'll be adding in the future. I should point out that at any time if I need another terminal I can always swap these Wago connectors out to one with five terminals. They're very easy to move around and swap out. Here you can see the Wago connector that I used for the left 
side turn signal. The large red 18 gauge wire is the one that goes to the isolator fuse block. The brown wire is the left turn signal wire from my Rivco trailer harness. The two smaller red wires that go into one of the connectors are for the show chrome LED marker lights on the left side. And then the blue wire is the left turn signal wire coming from the Pathfinder high mount LED brake light. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and click on that little subscribe button down below. I'll also put a link in the description down below for the Wago connectors where you can get them through Amazon. And in a future video, I'll show you how I tuck all these wires out of the way.